Hi, wonderful to see you, Suzanne. Uh, looking forward to delving into all things Price Global today and learning more about you and your journey in Japan. Perhaps you could give us a little self-introduction. Yes, I'm from Wales and I've lived in Tokyo this time since about 2005. I was actually the head of Tokyo English Lifeline years ago, so I used to work more Hi. in the mental health field. And um, yeah, then this time came back working in the space of diversity, equity and inclusion. Lovely. And on that topic, we are here to learn more about your work in diversity, equity and inclusion and specifically about Price Global. What was the idea behind the company and what is it that you, you do currently? Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Price Global is a consultancy that specializes in diversity, equity and inclusion. And my vision goes back to 2005 when I was internal as a head of DEI for an organization. And I was one of the first people doing that kind of work in this part of the world. And so I found that there were no external suppliers. There was nobody I could buy initiatives from. And so my vision for Price Global was to be the consultancy in Asia Pacific who provide all of the DEI initiatives I would have liked to have bought when I was internal. That includes consulting, which could be strategy and audit. It includes workshops and also coaching. Um, if I think about why any organization would bring in Price Global, uh, they would bring us in to deliver anything that either they can't do themselves or they shouldn't do themselves. So it could be they don't have the skills or the experience, or perhaps from a confidentiality point of view that they're not the right people to be doing it. At the end of the day, our purpose is to develop compassionate and enlightened people, team members, managers, leaders, so that organizations have an environment whereby people can bring their whole self to work, have a sense of belonging, and they can thrive and the organizations can thrive. And so what is it that makes Price Global unique and different to other DEI training and consultancy programs? we have a lot more history. We're not jumping on any kind of bandwagon. Mm -hmm. When I first started working in this field, people would say to me, why don't you just do like regular leadership? Why are you in this little tiny niche? And of course, back then I knew that this was a business imperative that DEI weaves into pretty much anything that we do. So I think that's one thing is that we, we have the, the content experience. We have a lot of experience in terms of knowing what organizations have tried and what results it got what worked, what didn't quite get the results that we were hoping for. But then I think the other thing is in terms of what's, um, what are some of our differentiators is that we have our, our, our foundations in psychology, social psychology, applied psychology. And so we're really good at working with mindsets and behaviors. And then we're also really good at helping uh, take something from being conceptual to being tangible and concrete. Unconscious bias is something that could be quite conceptual and to have a workshop that simply helps you recognize unconscious bias and understand some of the mental mechanisms that lead to it, okay, that's great. But at the end of the day, if you want any kind of transformation to your culture, it's all about application. It's about what do we do with that. You know, diversity at the end of the day is everything that makes me different from you. So it's the what, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's, it's gender, age, have a, a disability or not, etc. The important part, though, is inclusion. And that's the how. How do we respect each other? How do we communicate across our differences? Um, how do we leverage each other's differences? Because if we hire people who are different and we want them to leave their differences on the doorstep and just assimilate and be the same as everybody else, what was the point? So the important piece is inclusion. And so inclusion would be about respect, it would be about connecting across our difference, it would be about leveraging our different talents. I have done my research and as of time of filming, we have just delivered the British Business Awards 2021, of which Price Global were, of course, a, a nominee for the DEI category. Within that, I remember reading something about inclusion theatre. Perhaps you could give us a little bit more information on what it is that that entails. But inclusion theatre, this is a kind of facilitated in the moment experience that can bring up awareness around the complexities of inclusion. So what we do is we use an interactive drama approach. Quite often in, in training, you'll hear managers saying what they think they should say. 
So they will give us the right answers and the best practices and especially you know if they think HR is watching then better say the right thing. And so then we can have characters saying yes that sounds very textbook you know I've, I've been taught that in my organization too but it's not easy is it when you've got not enough people on your team and targets to hit. Um, and so they'll kind of push back or they will defend their behaviors. And so this is a great way to have a very courageous conversation at a very deep level. That, that all sounds incredible and is definitely what makes Price Global unique. Um, I can't help but think though that must be a really powerful tool to have in person. What about these past 18, 20 months now? Have you been delivering this, this virtually? Uh, Price Global is virtual by design, so ever since 2005 we have been virtual. So in terms of adapting to working virtually for our own team, there was nothing new to learn. We were already using all of the, the virtual working tools. Our teams are located in all different kinds of places. We operate from home offices. We sometimes join meetings with each other and even take part in workshops together when we're on the road for some other purposes. So. For us, adapting was not tricky. However, you know, of course, for our clients, then they were on a much steeper learning curve. However, the inclusion theatre, then we needed to think about how we were going to pull that off. And I think at the end of the day, we're creatives. And so having these limitations in some ways made us more creative to think about, okay, how do we kind of change what we were already doing on stage, get across the same messages, but do it in a COVID safe way and engage people online. And so we were actually able to create video content in a COVID safe way, even with actors in say five different countries for one piece of video. And we were able to figure out how we would do our interaction on screen and also making sure that we have like, you know, the same emotional contact, that we could still read the expressions of people because we're relying on how people are reacting to us for us to know how to interact with them. But yes, figuring out how we were going to do that because we don't actually know of any organization that's doing something like this. So we had nothing to follow. We simply thought through, figured out how we were going to do it, rehearsed it with each other virtually, had some friendly audiences work with us and evolved it so that then we were ready to start delivering it for our clients. You know, a lot of training has gone online. A lot of people have a lot of fatigue around being online all the time for work. However, the workshops we're running, they're engaging and people are moved by what they're doing. They're really getting some learnings from that, some ideas around their behaviors from that. So yeah, this has actually been a great opportunity for us to expand what we were already doing. And now it means that we can deliver this globally. It doesn't matter where we are, we can reach anybody anywhere. I suppose for anyone watching who may be interested, do you have any examples of the types of results that you're seeing from clients? So the kind of feedback that we're getting, very senior people joining sessions, perhaps from, from investment banks, from the consumer products companies, big fashion brands, very senior people saying, in all my life, this is the most impactful training I have ever taken. And these are people who often, people in HR, heads of DEI, learning and development, they worry about taking two hours of these people's time for a workshop and they're walking away with that. And then we repurpose the video content into a facilitator's toolkit. And we gave them a train the trainer on how to use that video content and a toolkit so that they can facilitate similar courageous conversations within their teams or within the organization without the expense of us. And sometimes, you know, it's more credible to have some senior leaders inside the organization facilitating the conversations. And of course, you know, at the end of the day, our goal is to, uh, to have enlightened people in the organization and more inclusion, more sense of belonging. And they're saying that this is transforming their organization because they're able to leverage this so much. For any potential new clients here watching today, how do they find out more? How do they find you online, presumably? Um, how can they get in touch? 
we have a special offer for everybody that if they would like to take part in a showcase session of Inclusion Theatre Online, then all they need to do is send an email to me, Suzanne at PriceGlobal.com, and we will let them know the dates and the languages that we're running some showcase sessions and they can join and experience it for themselves. And then, of course, yes, they can learn much more about us at our website, PriceGlobal.com. Um, thank you so much, Suzanne. Um, really, really lovely chatting to you and learning more about you, but also about the amazing work that Price Global are doing. Um, thank you for your continued support of the Chamber and looking forward to seeing what else you achieve this year.